So first things first, we need to cut and wear our clay. So I'm going to take this wire tool, wrap it around your block of clay. I'm using recycled clay, um, but you're just going to pull straight through. Um, lucky me, I cut it right to 1.5 and to 2 pounds. Um, somewhere between there is a good place to start. After your clay is all weighed out, it's time to wedge. When wedging the clay, I'm using the inner part of my palm right where it connects to the wrist and I'm going to press down. When I press down, I'm using my upper body to support that. So I'm kind of rocking my body back and forth um, to press the clay downwards and using my fingertips to roll it back towards me. In doing this, I'm trying to get any air bubbles out of the clay. Air bubbles can be problematic when throwing. Um, so I'm just pressing down and rolling back if it does get into too long of a log shape i can kind of change the angle and start rolling again after i've done this for a little bit of time i'm going to kind of slam the clay around until i get it into a nice cone shape um, this will help me out when i'm ready to put it on the wheel and we're going to flash on over to the wheel this wheel's a little messy but that's okay we're going to look at the bat here for just a moment this helps us be able to remove our pieces when we're done without having to touch them and we'll just take that bat off at the very end. It's also going to be where we're going to slam our clay down. So we're going to find that center and give it a hard slam right into what we perceive as the middle. Now, when I'm sitting at the wheel, I've got my knees on both sides. And I want to make sure that I have my elbows pressed into uh, my thighs here. It's going to support my body as I press into this. It's also going to help keep me pretty grounded. You'll see what I mean as you go. So I'm adding some water to the clay and to my hands. I want to make sure that I'm not causing any friction there um, to slow my wheel at all. Now, my wheel at the studio is an old-fashioned kick wheel. So I'm kicking with my right leg to get this going up to speed. You'll get to know your own wheel um, when you're in the studio. So to start, I'm going to squeeze my hands together. I'm using the inner part of my palms. And here you'll see my clay popped straight off. Sometimes this does happen. It can be frustrating. Um, just give it a good hard slam back down. We kind of laugh if it gets rolling around on all of the sides. Um, to be honest, with this recording, I was having one hell of a time getting this clay centered. So um, it is kind of accurate for what first time centering can look like. Now that I've got the clay put back on the wheel pretty solidly, what I'm going to start doing is following the steps of centering. So here you're seeing me cone. What coning is, is squeezing both of those hands in towards the center with equal force. And as you squeeze towards the center, the clay has nowhere left to go but up. So it's going to start getting taller, getting into this kind of tall cone shape. Notice that it is still wiggling a little bit on me. But I'm trying to keep my hands as steady as possible. I'm using that inner part of my hand. If there's extra clay, just throw it in the bucket um, to squeeze that up. After I pull it up, I'm going to press it back down. So I'm going to use that top part of my hand, the same section that we were when we were wedging, and pressing it back down. When I'm doing this, my right arm may come off of my knee a little bit, but I'm going to pin it to um, kind of my rib cage to still keep it grounded within my body to press that back down. That is the steps of coning. Now we're gonna really get into centering. Coning is kind of wedging on the wheel. Centering is making sure that it is radial symmetry in the very middle um, of our wheel. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my left hand, making sure my hands are nice and wet. I'm gonna take my left hand and push through the middle from the side. So I'm gonna be giving it force that direction and my right hand's gonna use the side of my palm to press down on the top. I'm going to lean these hands together so that they are touching and working as a unit. My goal here is to not move. My goal is to be pressing an equal force from the side and down. Sometimes I do let that top hand kind of down coast. towards the edge and the bottom of the clay on the bat. Um, now my wheel like I said, it's a kick wheel. It is not powered by electricity. So I'm kicking that with my right leg as I go here. Um, I do fall back into that position, right hand on the top, left hand on the side, really pressing down. Now with this, you can notice if you're looking at this real closely, the edge of that clay is still wiggling just a tiny bit. 
most of it is centered other than that very base, which is where you can have problems um, when starting out on the pottery wheel. So what I did there, I just took a quick tool, held it by my right knee, and pressed it into that bottom corner. You can see me here double checking to make sure that it is centered all the way around um, before I start into the next step. We have now coned and centered our clay. We are ready to start making a pot. So the next step is going to be opening. How I'm gonna open, I'm gonna fall into butterfly fingers here. There's two different ways, but thumbs is definitely a way to do it. My fingers are gonna coast on the outside and my thumbs are gonna press into that center spot. So keeping those elbows down, I'm just gonna force those thumbs right into that middle and press down until I have um, roughly half inch, quarter inch on left below my thumbs um, on the bottom of the pot here. Just establishing inside and outside just forcing down first, then thinking about opening up. So this is the other way you can do. If your thumbs are not having it, you can press your fingers from your right hand into it while your left hand is just cupping around it as support. So this hand positioning can be used with a sponge as well um, for those with long fingers. Uh, I'm gonna do the same hand positioning here to start widening this piece. So. Those right fingers are on the inside, that left hand's just cupping on the outside, and I'm pulling that clay out closer to me, straight back towards my stomach, and really making sure that that clay is pressed evenly at the bottom. For this case, we're making a cylinder, so I'm gonna try to have a right ankled bottom here. Um, no curves. If we're making a bowl, then that will have a bit of a slope to it. Um, but for this point, we're just going to make a nice right angled bottom. I'm pulling those fingers back closer to me. When our goal is a right angled bottom, sometimes it's nice to grab this wooden rib that has this right angle built straight into it. I'm going to work in what I call my piece of the pie, which is between my right knee and my stomach. I'm going to press that flat bottom into the bottom, holding this piece with two hands just press that corner into the into the edge and the opposite end should be crossing over the middle point it will peel up all of that extra and we'll have a nice right bottom our next step is to pull walls so this can be a little tricky to explain so i'm going to try to show you right here um with this cross cut what our fingers will be doing so notice i have my right hand on the outside my left hand on the inside, and here I'm just using fingers, but what I'm trying to explain in this video where my hands are moving too fast for me to explain is that I'm going to pinch at that very bottom point and then slowly move those fingers upwards. As I pinch, again, that clay has nowhere else to go but up, so it's going to stretch that upwards. So let's see if I can show it a little slower, a little more clearly on this piece um, now viewing the same piece that we were earlier from the side and go from there the key to this step is to have slow hands or have hands moving at an equal pace to your wheel so in this case i'm getting my wheel up to speed i'm making sure everything is nice and wet for my hands to slip through there so i'm going to have that right hand on the outside left hand on the inside and they're going to watch this pinch happen right here. I'm going to slowly move those fingers upwards, letting the wheel make a full rotation before they move up at all. And so in that case, I did have a lot of clay come off on the side. That's okay. We've been adding a lot of water to this. This next pull, you're going to see just how much um, this can grow. I'm also going to use the sponge with this one as a little support on the outside. So I'm going to pull this up slowly. And as I get to the top, this is where people start to panic. Just keep going gently. You can kind of release pressure here, but you do want those walls to be consistent all the way to the top. So you don't want thick spots. You don't want thin spots. And how we do that is making sure that the gap between our fingers or our fingers and the sponge is the same the whole way up. It's not necessarily about the pressure that you're using, but about the gap that that clay is able to fill. So I do do one more pull here. Notice I didn't try to pull all of the clay in one pull. You can do 
three pulls, four pulls, five pulls, whatever works for you and the clay that's sitting in front of you there. Now, at this point, I do have that nice thickness of a quarter inch that we're looking to get with these pieces. A half inch is okay for beginners too. Um, they are, they can be a little heavier pots, but just somewhere in that half inch, quarter inch thickness to get us into this next step. At this point, I'm ready to address this clay skirt. That's this little flare we've got going on at the bottom of our pot. So I'm gonna go back to grabbing this wooden rib and I can just start same spot, my right knee just from the outside, pressing that angle down and pressing into the center of my pot. Now that gives it a little bit of a curve still. Um, some people just are a little less intimidated by that one than grabbing the wood knife. With the wood knife, what I can do is start up at the top and then just press straight down and make a nice right angled edge there to mimic what we've got going on inside. A little bit of clay might be around that edge. That's okay. We're just going to scoop it back up with that same tool. We can kind of keep switching angles until all of that gunk is out of there. And that's what you'll see me doing here. Like I said, I was having quite a day throwing this. Uh, so you're going to see all of the steps that you might face. That little bit of clay did decide to just keep hanging on. So I just hit it again with the wood knife. So this is a pretty standard cylinder at this point. I can decide to change the angle of that wood knife. And then suddenly my pot becomes a little more interesting in shape. It's got kind of a curve towards the bottom going inwards instead of out like that clay skirt was. And it gets this sort of rounded bottom shape with a piece that does have that crisp right angle on the inside. Right angle is the way we want to go. We want it to have that even thickness all the way around. But I do just want to show how you can shift this piece over and over again and how the cylinder is the base for everything else. So here what I'm going to show, I'm going to press out with my fingers from the inside. And just like that, my piece starts to have this belly so this is what we call the shaping portion. So we pulled our walls, cleaned up that bottom, and now we're into shaping. At this stage, you're not necessarily pulling walls at all. You're just pushing and pulling those walls that are there from either the inside or the outside to get a bunch of different shapes. Um, here, I'm gonna show you another technique that we can use, um, which I call just give it a little hug. Um, those hands are just super gliding on the outside. It's gonna really ring that piece in at the top. And I could just do this over and over again if I really wanted to get that bottleneck shape. Um, when you're doing, especially that like little hug step, which I'm gonna do again here to get us back to kind of a cylinder, um, it can distort that rim a little bit. So the rim of this piece, that very top edge is doing a wiggle. It's been wiggling for a while um, so I will show how to cut off the top of a piece too because um, that is a thing that especially as beginners we learn to do because you know maybe that top's not doing quite what we want um, and cutting it off can just make that piece so much better. What I'm going to do now is a little bit for dramatic effect but I'm going to really wreck up this rim a bit um, Kind to give you an idea of what it could look like. If I've got these kind of spirals going, there's th thin spots in there. That top is not exactly what I'd want, right? So I'm gonna try to cut it off right where I just put that little fingernail line in there um, just to really crisp up that edge. So I'm gonna take my left hand right in front of me. I kind of scoot so you can see this. And I make sure that my thumb is just below where I want to cut that off at. I'm gonna be holding this needle tool right on my thumb and pressing it in towards my finger. Once those have touched, it lifts straight up. It's so nice. You get this beautiful loop. Key there is to go in slow and gently and really have that thumb, um, that needles will press up against your thumb. What I can do then is just give it a little loving um, with a nice damp sponge to really smooth out that top edge so there's not any like sharp points. And then I'm just going to crisp up all the rest of it, do a little bit of finishing. It is very possible to overwork clay um, because of all of the things I've been doing for you here. It is definitely a little overworked right now. Um, <clears throat> but we're just going to 
add one final detail to make this a really upright cylinder. I am going in with that rib tool and just gonna pinch between it and my fingers on the inside and I get this nice cylinder. That's gonna be the first thing we're gonna make and I'll look forward to seeing you in class.